church leaders, you might be overlooking people in your surroundings, in your ministry, who need to be asked the questions and hear the answers. I'm going to show you how to identify some of those people so you can connect with them and do that. So let's get started. So where do you find people to do all this with? Let me start with your local church or your ministry first and help you see there's all kinds of people around there you can be doing this with. Now to carry some of these ideas out, you need to start training people and have a large group of trained ambassadors who know how to do all this. So the first place you can find people to use Ford with uh, talking with them, visiting with them in their home or in other places, uh, are all your visitors. So you can you need to have a way to keep track of your visitors and try to get the information on them as to where they live and so you can follow up on them. And that can be complicated in some places, but you need to find a way to be able to get into their home to be able to visit with them and do forward and see if you can do the studies with them. You can go back, assuming you've kept track of this, look at your visitors who are no longer attending uh, your visitors over the last year two years. They're probably still there. Some of them may have moved on. Some may have found another church, but recontact them and see if you can get into their homes to do this with. It probably wasn't done before. You didn't know how to do it. Another possibility would be regular attenders who aren't members. Uh, you don't know if they're Christians or not in many cases. You need to know who are they? I, I, do you keep attendance? Do you know who your members are and who attenders are? You need to be able to separate them so you can identify the attenders and then to come up with a plan, we want to visit, if possible, the home of every one of our regular attenders and do forward and see where that goes. What about new believers? Now they may be regular attenders, but what if you went back for the last year, two years, three years, you decide. Who are all the people who have become Christians in the last year or two years? Identify them. I doubt they had anybody sit down with them one on one and take them through these six lessons. If you did that with them, work your way through that list, what a blessing that would be to them. And you can think of how this would help them. First off, they've got somebody from the church really showing interest in them. They're going to their home. That oftentimes never happens. They're learning more about their faith. That will strengthen them in their faith. Uh, we'll learn more about them. We may find out some issues going on in their lives that they need some help with. And then at the end, we can say, you know, you have some family and friends that probably, who, who probably need Christ. We have a training program. We'll show you how to use these same lessons. Get them engaged in b making disciples. What, a, what about your absentees? People who've been members, they've been coming a long time, and then they just dropped out of sight. Do you know where they are? Do you know why they're gone? Now, if they moved out of town, that's one thing. If they left and they're angry with you and they don't even want you walking up their sidewalk, then you may want to leave them alone. If they join another church, maybe take them up. But all the others, maybe they're, they're going through crises in their life. Maybe they're having marital problems, financial problems, and maybe they feel abandoned by the church. Maybe they're, they've sinned and they're embarrassed to come back. Find out who those people are. You ought to know who they are. And try to visit them, contact them, and maybe offer to them the studies again. Maybe just your being there and showing interest in them will be invaluable to them. It'll help you get to know them better. Build bonds as brothers and sisters in the family. And maybe hearing the gospel again will just be so encouraging for them. What about the parents of the kids who come to your church, but the parents don't? They send them or drop them off. Do you know who they are? What about all your members? Few of your members had anybody sit down with them before they became a Christian and take them through studies like this? Doing this will build bonds and relationships what if it takes you two, three years to take all your members through this? They'll understand their faith better. It'll be a learning experience for them. And at the end, you can always say, we have a training program we'd like you to go through so you can learn how to use these studies yourself. Multiply yourselves time and time again, and you will activate your membership into true disciple making. It'll generate excitement in your church like nothing else you could do. You have people who come to the church for funerals for weddings, for counseling. You have people who call you to go visit them in the hospital. You ought to use all those connections as an opportunity at some appropriate moment 
to ask them the big question. Tell me, just do Ford. Tell me about your family, what line of work are you in, and uh, what's your religious background? I'd like to ask you a question. We've had couples or people who've come to us for funerals, for weddings, all of those things, and we've used Ford with them and ended up sharing the studies and seeing them come to Christ. Make the most of every opportunity, Paul told us. This is doing that.